This is the 26th lecture for MA 1012 at University College Cork. In this lecture, we'll look at variation of constants. The method known as variation of constants is suppose, supposes that we know um, how to solve uh, the equation, uh, let's say. So again, we're looking at inhomogeneous um, and um, non-constant coefficient equations. So, But suppose we already know somehow how to solve uh, this guy. Uh, plus r of x, y equals 0, the homogeneous. This is the associated homogeneous equation. Um, now we want to try to find, um, we want to try and find what happens if we want to put in some inhomogeneity. Can we get the inhomogeneity we want? So um, if we know a solution to this, a solution, so y is y, 1 of x, to this, um, can we use it to solve for some other equation? But the sa same thing with with a, with an inhomogeneity. So we want to get out uh, some particular inhomogeneity uh, equals some f of x. So the guess that we take, which is probably the easiest way to remember this this method, is that we're going to guess that maybe uh, maybe the solution could be some uh, the solution to the inhomogeneous problem could be some unknown function v of x times the given solution to the homogeneous. So you're sort of taking this homogeneous guy and you're plugging in some multiple of it and trying to find an equation for this uh, for this multiple that will somehow make it possible for this to solve and it'll pop out the right inhomogeneity. So let's see what happens if we do that. We get y prime is v prime y1 plus v y1 prime, and y prime prime is v prime prime y1 plus v prime y1 prime twice, once from here, once from here, plus v y1 prime prime. Now I'm going to add those up and see if I can get what I want to come out the end. So we take p y prime prime plus q again p is p of x q is q of x and so on um, this is the equation we want to solve p plus q y prime plus r y and we want it to equal some f of x some inhomogeneity that we're given let's figure out what we do get we get this p times y prime prime is v prime prime y1 plus 2 v prime y1 prime plus v y1 prime prime plus we have a q um, times y prime, v prime y1 plus v y1 prime, and then plus r times uh, this guy, v y1. And let's see if we can collect up all the terms that just have v's in them. So v times what? p y prime prime, y1 prime prime, plus q this has a v in it, y1 uh, prime plus r. This has a v in it, so that's y1. And then we've got terms with a, a v prime in them. Uh, that's uh, this guy here, so 2py1 prime plus, there's a v prime here, so that's uh, qy1. And then uh, terms with a v prime prime, there's only this this guy here, uh, v prime prime times p y one. Um, but we assumed y one um, solved the, exactly this. It was a solution to the homogeneous equation, so it knocks this out, giving us um, that we have uh, some equation. Which, if I write it in back, backwards order, starting with the v prime prime term, I get p y one times v prime prime plus this junk. Um, 2py1 prime plus qy1 times v prime, and no v prime, uh, no v term, and I want that to equal f of x. And so what I need to do is I need to get uh, get v prime prime to solve. Uh, sorry, get v to solve this. But this is no v's in it. No v only. It's only expressed in terms of v prime and v prime prime directly. So. Uh, so that means we can solve it. We can solve it. Um, so 
we can solve it by writing v um, as the integral of some unknown u dx. So uh, u is v prime. And then um, plugging that in here, we get an equation py1 times u prime plus this mess p 2py1 prime plus qy1 times u equals f of x. And then we use integrating factors or whatever we have to use to solve for u. And then uh, v is the integral of u dx. And then y, the final solution, is v times y1. So, um, so once we know a single y1 uh, that we can work from for the homogeneous, we can work out uh, the solution to the, to the inhomogeneous. So the abstract theory is a bit complicated, but it does say that if you know a solution of the associated homogeneous, that's what we started with, know something about the homogeneous, you know one solution of the associated homogeneous, you multiply it by an unknown function, and you plug in and see what happens. And when you get done, you should be able to come across the solution. You should be able to come up with an equation whose solution you can come up with. Um, so let's see if we can do it in an example. Um, we'll look at the simple example of um, uh, where we are. Um, let's try um, x squared y prime prime uh, uh, minus x x plus two y prime plus x plus two y equals zero. And what we don't know how to solve that one uh, right away, but uh, we could try to um, to first of all uh, check that y equals x is a solution, and then by our by our method we now know how to find the solution uh, of of this equation with any inhomogeneity. And just for simplicity, let's try as our example. We'll try um, to find the general solution with homogeneity zero. Just find the general solution of this homogeneous equation. Because we could now find, once we've got that is a solution, our method tells you put some v in front. You can put it, you can get any inhomogeneity you like. Let's just try inhomogeneity zero just to make it a simple example. Um, so first we have to check this is a solution. How do we do that? So y equals x. So y prime is 1. y prime prime is 0. And then we plug those into the equation. x squared y prime prime minus x. x plus 2y prime plus x plus 2y equals 0. Does it equal 0? That put the question mark to remind myself that I'm checking. Uh, it's always helpful to put in these question marks to be sure that I'm, I know whether I'm, I, I'm, I know that this is true or I'm checking that this is true. Um, so y prime prime is 0, so that drops out. Minus x, x plus 2, y prime is 1, so that's just 1 there. Plus x plus 2 times y, y is x. And is that 0? And you can see that cancels that, and you get 0 equals 0, and it works. So again, I'm using question marks to make sure that I know that I'm, I'm actually checking to see if this is true. I don't know this is true in advance. I want to check to see if that's true, and then this little check mark tells me that, yes, it worked out. Um, some notation like that might be helpful on your exam so that you don't confuse me into thinking that you that you're, know this is true. Um, okay, so now we want to try and figure out how to find the general solution. We know that that's one solution. So the method tells us, a variation of constants tells us we should try something like the solution we got times some function v. So xv or vx. So then if that were going to be our general solution, so we're going to try uh, this, and according to our method, it should be possible to pop out any homogeneity we like using such a v. In particular, in this case, we're just going to try and pop out homogeneity 0. We've already got that y equals x gives us homogeneity 0. It works out to solve the, the homogeneous problem. But what if, what if I try and vary it? That's why I call it v for varying the solution by multiplying it by some v. Can I get other solutions? And the method told us that, yes, you should be able to get anything you want. You should be able to get the general solution for this, uh, the, whatever hom inhomogeneity you like, in particular for the homogeneous problem. So let's just compute out, and y prime is, derivative of x is 1, so v plus x v prime. y prime prime is v prime plus, to differentiate the x, you get a v prime. Differentiate the v prime, you get a v prime prime. So that's 2 v prime plus x v prime prime. 
Now we move on to uh, putting that into the differential equation. x squared times this mess. Uh, so uh, y prime prime is 2v prime plus x v prime prime minus x times x plus 2. Here we are with our differential equation. We're plugging in this guy v plus x v prime and then plus x plus 2 times y, which is x v. Again, v is not known. Um, so we're just going to see what happens. We plug this in, and we want we would like that to turn out to be 0. So I'll put question mark 0 again to try and explain what I'm doing. Um, we'll get a v prime prime term, which is just x cubed v prime prime. Then we we'll get a v prime term. We get 2x squared of them here, and then x squared times x plus 2 here. So it's plus it's 2x squared v primes here. And then this one, that comes out here, so it's minus x squared, x plus 2 from here. That x and that x go together, and then we get a v prime. And then we know the v terms are all supposed to vanish, and I think they do, right? Because we've got x times x plus 2 minus them that there, and then x times x plus 2 of them over here. And so we can see that this v term exactly cancels that one. This has got x plus 2 times x and x plus 2 times x with a minus sign, so they knock each other out, as expected. And so now we'll set uh, v to be the integral of u uh, dx, so u is v prime, and so this equation becomes, uh, this is equal to x, oh sorry, I should probably simplify it first, well, all right, let's just do this anyway, um, too late now. So we'll put that as u prime plus, that's 2x squared minus x squared x plus 2 times u, and this, as I said, I should have simplified that, 2x squared minus uh, an x cubed minus 2x squared is actually uh, minus an x cubed, so it's x cubed u prime minus x cubed u, and um, and we wanted all that to be 0, so that, if I've got it right, is um, uh, going to allow us to cancel the x cubed, and we get u prime minus u, we want it to be 0. That's the exponential function equation. So u is some constant times e to the x. And then v, we go back and say, well, v has to be integral u. So v is the integral of this guy. So it's another constant plus this constant e to the x. And then y was x v. And so y is x times a constant plus a constant times an exponential. And that should be, hopefully, the general solution. Now we've assumed here that we had one solution to the uh, to the homogeneous problem, but what if we had two? Um, we might be able to generalize this a little bit better if we had two solutions. So suppose that we have y1 and y2 both uh, are their independent solutions solve the associated homogeneous problem. Suppose that you're handed those, and you know somehow they both solve this associated homogeneous. You plug them in, and you try them out, and there they are solving the homogeneous guy. What we could try to do is to say, well, the, then the general solution of the homogeneous of the homogeneous um, problem is uh, will be a constant times y1 plus a constant times y2, and that's why when we start to vary our constants. That's why I call it varying, varying uh, variation of constants, so we vary constants. In other words, we allow the constants to become variables and try and solve the inhomogeneous problem. Um, so we try this to solve uh, an inhomogeneous problem. Um, so that might give us a method to solve inhomogeneous problems in more in a more general setting. The idea is just to solve the homogeneous one and then turn the constants into functions um, so that we get uh, the, uh, hopefully, we get something that solves the inhomogeneous problem. And it may be easier to write it in that way, and that might make it easier to come up with a solution of the, of the inhomogeneous problem. Let's do a simple example of that trick in action, the variation of constants. Um, so suppose that we we know something um, uh, we want to know the, the the general solution of this guy 
Uh, what's the solution? What's the general solution of that guy? So first of all, we do the homogeneous, the associated homogeneous problem, which is this guy. Associated homogeneous equation. And we know that one well. That uh, sine and cosine both satisfy that. The second derivative is the negative of their value. So we know that y has to be any constant times the cosine of x plus any constant times the sine of x. Okay, so now we're going to try a varying of constants. Try y equals v1 cos x plus v2 sine x to solve uh, the, the uh, inhomogeneous problem. Because we've already solved the homogeneous. That's done. That's this guy here. The associated homogeneous problem has this solution. But if we want to do this one to solve the inhomogeneous or non-homogeneous problem, Okay, so how do I do that? Um, well, I'll just try differentiating formally and plug it in and see what I get. So if this was my function, I'd get y prime would be v1 prime times cos x. Cosine is minus sine, so it'd be minus v1 sine x. And then the v2 uh, part is v2 prime sine x. Sine is cosine, so plus v2 cos x. And now what I want to do is to differentiate one more time. Uh, so v1 prime prime cos x minus, uh, let's see, oh, plus, let's see, so derivative of cosine is minus sine, so v1 prime sine x. I differentiate the cosine, I get minus sine. Then I do this guy, uh, minus v1 prime sine x, and then differentiate the sine and get a cosine, so it's minus v1 cos x and then I've got the v2 term so v2 prime prime sine x derivative of sine is cosine so plus v2 prime cos x and then this guy here plus v2 prime cos x derivative of cosine is minus sine so it's minus v2 times sine x. And now I have to put all that together into y prime prime plus y, and I want that to equal 10x. So I'm going to put this whole expression here in, v1 prime prime cos x minus v1 prime sine x minus v1 prime sine x, there's actually two of them, uh, minus v1 cos x plus v2 prime prime sine x, plus v2 prime cos x, uh, plus another v2 prime cos x minus v2 sine x. OK, that's the double, the second derivative written out. And then y itself is just this guy, plus v1 cos x, plus v2 sine x. Now, I should hopefully have something that cancels with something. So when I differentiated the cos x twice, I got this guy here, and then I got that at the end there this guy and this guy, and so it simplifies a little bit. So I'm going to try and simplify this by writing it. Well, this is, after all, the derivative. It's v1 prime cos x all prime. Um, and then I've got here, um, this guy is v2 prime sine x all prime. So I've gathered these terms and these terms, and then I've got um, these terms left here, uh, minus v1 prime sine x plus v2 prime cos x. So now I have to choose what I want to uh, turn into what. Um, I'm going to try to get maybe these terms to be the tan x and these terms to be uh, to be vanishing. There is, after all, some freedom here in what I want to choose to do. Um, so I'll choose that as my collecting up of equations. So we can write that as um, requiring that, again, that um, if you write it as I want, uh, v1 prime cos x uh, plus v2 prime sine x prime minus v1 prime sine x plus v2 prime cos x equal to 10x. And what we're trying to do here is to make, um, we'll just try to make, uh, just 
separate it out and try the, try this equals zero, and we'll try this equal to this. Um, that would solve our problem. So we're going to try and cause all this coupled system phi one prime cos x plus v two prime sine x uh, equal to zero, and at the same time um, we're going to try and solve v minus v one prime sine x plus v2 prime cos x equals tan x. This is a system of two linear equations and two unknowns. If you solve them, just as, don't need to do any differential equations, solve that pair of equations as a pair of linear equations and two unknowns, v1 prime, v2 prime. That's why we've set it up that way, to the, treat this, this thing as being all about v1 prime and v2 prime, and this thing all about v1 prime and v2 prime. So we solve for v1 prime, v2 prime, it's just a pair of linear equations in them. And what we find is that v1 prime turns out to have to be minus sine x, tan x, and v2 prime has to be cos x. So that gives us these, these uh, expressions for v1 prime and v2 prime, and now we just have to integrate them. So v1 is minus integral sine oh, sine x, tan x, dx, and v2 is integral cos x dx. So the cosine integral we can do easily enough, but the sine, uh, the, so this is uh, derivative of sine is cosine plus constant. Um, but the first one is more complicated. Um, v1 is minus integral sine x tan x. And in the notes, uh, it tells you how to integrate that thing. It's minus, uh, it's a bit uh, difficult. Um, to, um, uh, well, it's more difficult, let's say. Um, uh, we'll leave you to, to ponder that. There's a hint in the notes as to what to do about that. Let's try another example. So we'll take a look at, um, at, uh, at the uh, differential equation x squared y prime prime plus x y prime minus y equals zero. Um, and we'll first of all uh, consider uh, that we know, uh, well, we'll be asked to check that uh, well, we can find um, one of these solutions, that y1 equals x is a solution, and then we'll use that as the seed with which to try and find other solutions. Okay, so we start off by um, saying that if y, y, well, that's y1 is x, we want to check if that's a solution. So if y were x, then y prime would be 1, and y prime prime would be 0. We have to plug those numbers into this x squared y prime prime plus x y prime minus y, and ask if we get out 0. So that's x squared times 0 plus x times 1 minus x. Uh, clearly, uh, that is equal to zero. So that means that is a solution. Now, what can we do about finding other solutions? So as before, we'll try uh, taking the solution we have and multiplying it by something called v, uh, variation of constants, to see if we can get uh, some other solution out of this thing. Um, so if we plug in that guy into our equation, we get x, well, let's just say we get y prime is, is um, v plus x v prime and y prime prime is v prime plus uh, v prime plus x v prime prime so that's 2 y prime plus x v prime prime so we plug those into our differential equation we have uh, we want to get uh, 0 and it should be x squared y prime prime plus x y prime minus y and x squared uh, y prime prime is this stuff here, so 2v prime plus xv prime prime plus x times y prime, which is this here, x plus uh, v plus xv prime, and then uh, minus y, which is xv. So we can expand all that out. Let's put the v prime prime term first, so x squared v prime prime, and then how many x's we've got on x, uh, or sorry, how many v primes we've got 
uh, v prime here and v prime here. So we're going to have 2x v prime from this one and then another an x squared v prime from that one. And then we should get an x v cancelling an x v. Sorry, we've messed this up. This is x squared, so that should be x. That's x cubed, and that should be 2x uh, squared, right? Plus x squared. Okay, sorry, so that should be better. So hopefully I'm getting it right now. Um, this should be x cubed v prime prime plus 3x squared v prime. And we want to try and get that to equal 0. But we can already see that it's a derivative of x cubed v prime. Derivative equals zero, so integrate that, x cubed v prime is a constant, and so v prime is a constant over x cubed, and so v is the integral of that constant over x cubed dx, which is some possibly different constant, x to the minus 2 plus some constant. Note, I don't need to keep track too carefully of the constants because the, this constant multiple of a 1 of 1 over x cubed when you integrate it becomes some constant multiple of x to the minus 2. Now that's v, and remember that y is supposed to be x v, and so y is going to be x times this is a constant over x plus, it's one constant over x plus this guy's another constant times x. So now we've solved a, a homogeneous problem. Let's see if we can use that solution to solve an inhomogeneous problem. So we'll uh, look at a related inhomogeneous problem, but we're going to use the solution to the last problem to, f to solve it. So we're going to try to find um, a solution to, to the problem um, x squared y prime prime plus xy prime minus y is x log x. So the solution we had to our last problem was somehow that uh, y, um, so the homogeneous problem had a solution y was a constant uh, over x plus a constant times x. We can describe our general technique to handle these kind of problems. We set um, this guy to be somehow, um, let's, let's write this as a constant times, um, let's say a constant times y, let's maybe write c1 y1 plus c2 y2, where these are now c1 and c2. Um, then the general method should be that you try to vary the constants v1, y1, plus v2, y2. And then what you'll try to do is to put together a system which should look like, uh, let's try to get v1 prime y1 plus v2 prime y2 to be 0, while at the same time trying to get um, the, uh, the leading coefficient of our, of our problem here, which is our, say, p of x in the general setting, in this case it'll be x squared, um, times v1 prime y1 prime plus v2 prime y2 prime to equal the f of x in homogeneity. So that's our general uh, formula. Well, these are our general formulas for how to organize the, the computation of differential equations, or a pair of differential equations, for the v's. So in this particular problem, uh, our y1 is uh, is simply going to be, well, let's make y1 be 1 over x, so x to the minus 1, and y2 be x. So, uh, so then we'll just try to calculate out what these differential equations say. So we write out what the equations have to be on v1 and v2 prime. We should get, uh, plugging these y's in here, uh, our p is x squared, and f is x log, sorry, p is, uh, p of x is x squared, f of x is x log x. So plugging all that in gives this system of equations. It gives that uh, x squared times v1 prime y1 prime plus v2 prime y2 prime has to equal uh, x log x. At the same time, that's the it's this guy here, but the previous equation is um, is simply um, v1 prime x to the minus 1 plus v2 prime x equals 0. So we'll put those into, into a matrix, these two linear equations. I'll put this first one, I don't know why, but put them in the opposite order from the notes, so put them back in the same order. Uh, x to the minus 1 is 1 over x, 
and then there's an X here, and then here, this should be, um, ah, well, I have to write out what is Y1 prime and Y2 prime. Y1 prime is, this is minus X squared, and Y2 prime is 1. So, sorry, it's a bit messy now. That X squared, uh, X to the minus 2, times this has to equal X ogle X, so I have to, to move the X squared over to the other side. Maybe it's better if I do a few more steps. Um, so this guy becomes, let's divide the X squared over to the other side, so it becomes log X over X equals, um, and then this guy is now V1 prime uh, minus V1 prime X squared, and then plus V2 prime equals this stuff. So I now have two uh, linear equations in V1 prime and V2 prime, these two here, and I put them in a matrix. I should get something like X to the minus 1X minus X to the minus 2, 1 times V1 prime V2 prime is 0 log X over X. And now I can t invert this matrix. I'll get V1 prime V2 prime equals 1 over the determinant of this guy, that times that minus that times that, so x to the minus 1 minus minus x to the minus 2 times x, that here, uh, times the adjugate matrix, 1, x to the minus 1, change the signs here, uh, times this, 0 log x over x. Okay, I don't want to do the arithmetic um, in front of you, so something like, hopefully, works out to be, if I've got it all right, minus x log x over 2 for this guy, and log x over 2 log 2x for this guy. So that gives us equations for the v's. Now we have to figure out what's the final result, uh, what's the final res uh, result for y. These are the v primes, actually, so we have to integrate them to get the v's, and they'll plug them back in to get the y answer. So, um, so we're going to take... Um, the v's then to be the integrals. v1 has to be the integral of v1 prime dx. So that's the integral of, according to my, uh, the way I've set up the problem. Uh, it's slightly different than the notes. Um, very slightly. A uh, couple of factors of 2 or something like that. Anyway, it looks uh, like this. And then um, I don't want to, well, you can certainly pull out a minus a half. I don't want to integrate x log x for you. Um, so some some simple um, some, uh, integration of my parts, and I think that if I've got it all right, which I might not, the answer is something like this, uh, plus some constant, C1. And then V2 similarly has to be the integral of V2 prime dx, and we know what V2 prime is. We worked out that it was, if I've got it all right, it was log x over 2x dx, and again, that's an integral you'd have to do by parts, which I think turns out to be something like a quarter of log x squared, maybe, um, plus an arbitrary constant. Okay, so that gives us um, expressions for the explicit expressions for v1 and v2, and then the solution y to our inhomogeneous problem that we got by varying constants. Remember how that came about? We took the homogeneous problem, we found its solutions y1, y2. Its general solution was a constant times y1 plus a constant times y2. And then we said, well, let's promote the constants to become um, to become variables, to become functions of x, and hope that we can somehow solve the inhomogeneous problem, which hopefully we've done here. So putting them together, we should get, I think it's minus x squared over 4 log x plus x squared over 8 plus c1 times y1, which is x to the minus 1 plus uh, this uh, v2, if I've got it right again, it's something like a quarter log x all squared plus c2, and that's times x. So that gives us a, a complete, rather long uh, solution to an inhomogeneous, non-constant coefficient problem um, using the seed that we knew one of the solutions to the associated homogeneous, and then we built up the other solution to the homogeneous, and then we managed to build up the general solution to the um, to the inhomogeneous problem.
I think it goes without saying that there's no way you could possibly understand this material without working through lots of examples. We have examples in the lecture notes, but you should probably do some of the exercises as well, and there are answers in the back for some of the exercises. So you should give it a try and see if you can do them, because otherwise you won't be able to follow the lectures through at all. You really need to work through lots and lots of problems to learn this material.